Okay, so now I think we're possibly on to the last one. Yes, okay. So this time it is uh, the last one that we'll look at today. Uh, rate of change in coyotes in a population is directly proportional to this number here. So basically it's uh, the number of coyotes at a certain time. So 650 minus the number at some given time. There are 300 coyotes, then um, two years later there are 500. Um, find the population after three years. So basically what you're looking at is you're looking at a graph that it's, um, it's going to look something like this if you were to look at what we're dealing with. It basically, uh, it levels off, it has an asymptote above it at 650. And we'll see that once we derive this. But, I mean, in nature you might think to yourself, we could let things grow exponentially, but eventually the earth is going to say, uh-uh, that's too many, and nature's going to take its course. So unfortunately for these coyotes, wherever they live, there's probably not enough food to sustain more than 650 of them. So that's how their population would grow. In an ideal world, they keep growing, but at some point, that's it. At 650, they hit a limit. So that's kind of how it connects to, uh, you know, why is this the equation that, that we're looking at. So we were told in the beginning here that it's directly proportional. So we know this relationship exists, right? So again, it's, it's not obvious, it's not stated, but it's one of those things in calculus that when you hear that the change is directly proportional, this is the equation that you'll be thinking of in your head. This is the change in population, it's directly proportional, and we were given the 650 minus n. Okay? So again, make that mental note, directly proportional is going to be in this form. So we need to come up with a model, and the model is going to have to do with a differential equation. So it's going to be dn over 650 minus n equals kdt. So this is the differential equation that will tell us the population of coyotes, not the change in population. So I'm going to give you a minute to see if you can come up with the uh, integrals and make your model. Okay, so um, on this side here, if we integrate, it's going to be, um, it's a natural log that we're looking at, but because n is negative, that means I have to have a negative sign in front here, because when I take its derivative, uh, it, that negative sign would, would disappear. It would balance out again. So, uh, uh, and again, if, if you're not super confident at this, I'm, I'm assuming we're getting more confident, then you could go like this and say, let u... Um, equal 650 minus n, du is negative dn, and you could make your substitutions and you'd see that you do come up with this answer. But I'm hoping that we're getting there where we don't have to always substitute. And again, fall back on it. If there's ever a time you're not sure, take the extra time and substitute. Okay, but for now, um, this is the model that we've got. So, uh, Let's see here. If we want to solve this, um, we'd like to get n by itself, so we know the number of coyotes. Um, natural log 650. And I'm going to leave the negative sign factored out like this. So that way when I write it, it's going to be um, e to the negative kt minus c and uh, is equal to 650 minus n. And here's the great part. When you subtract a constant, you get a constant, right? So a negative constant is still a constant. So for our purposes, we could really consider it like we had before, which was positive, because it doesn't matter. It could be negative 3, it could be positive 3. So that's why the constant is still going to be able to jump out, even though we haven't, uh, uh, you know, We've rearranged it that way. So 650 minus n. And if I rearrange that, now I have a model that says n equals 650 minus c e to the negative k t. Now this question, again, is similar to the way Newton's method goes. Or sorry, not Newton's method. Uh, the Newton's cooling law one that we did earlier, which was we don't know the initial condition. Um, or do we? 300. Yeah, we do know the initial condition. Initially, there's 300 coyotes, right? But if you look at our model, this is not the same model where we can just plug 300 in. That's not the same model because this 650 messes with things, OK? 
Okay? So what number, okay, in order to capture the information that the initial population is 300, what value would that constant have to be? I know I've heard it whispered. Yeah, 350 is the answer. So why 350? Well, initially, time equals to zero. So that means this here would be gone. So if that is gone, then I need to have a number. This would become a 1. And I need a number that's going to turn this into be uh, 300. So that's how I know that at time 0, that constant must equal 350 so that I have 300 coyotes in the population. Okay. So my model becomes 650 minus 350e to the negative kt. And now I need to find my growth constant. So I could use one of the points I've been given, um, which is two years later there are 500. So 500 is 650 minus 3, whoops, 350. E to the negative, and it'll be two years later, so negative 2k. So when I rearrange this, I'm going to have um, negative 150 equals negative 350 e to the negative 2k, and that looks like, uh, okay, that'll be 3 out of 7 is e to the negative 2k. And I'm running out of room here, but uh, using logs then, natural log of 3 over 7 equals negative 2k. So k would be equal to natural log 3 out of 7 divided by negative 2. So now I know, um, according to my model, that this is my growth constant for k. So I have all the information. Finally, um, I'm going to go and substitute k up here. And it wants to know the population after three years. So I'm going to go and stick three years into my model. So we'll use the calculator for this. So my calculator answer, I get uh, 551, whoops. Yeah, 551.8. So 0.8 of a coyote. Um, maybe it's just a little coyote puppy. So. <laughs>